very important that we know the place of fathers, those who have gone ahead of us. And one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is that, you know, it's an arrogance in ministry. One of the greatest deception of ministry is people thinking that they can do it all by themselves. Especially in these days of social media, where there are some people who leverage on media advantage. Media amplified their voice. Media put them out there in the eyes of people. So they are everywhere. So there's a deception, a grand deception, that they don't need anybody. If by the help of media and by the help of the Holy Spirit you are out there, please be humble because there are 7,000 that have not bowed their knees to bar that you'll be shocked at the depth of grace that they carry. In as much as you appreciate what God is doing in your life. So, it's important we understand the place of fathers, those who have gone ahead of us. When the Lord spoke to Joshua, when Joshua started his assignment, in Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1, 2, 3, down, God was very specific in instructing Joshua. He said, now, Moses, my servant, is dead. Verse 2, Joshua 1 and verse 2. Now, Moses, my servant, God was specific. Joshua, I know Moses could not take the people in. I know you saw the battles in the life of Moses, but he is my servant. The anointing of God upon a minister is not a yastic to criticize those who came before him. The anointing of God upon a man of God does not give him a leverage, a platform to become antagonistic of the message and the stand of those who came before him. They came, they did their bit, they left. Moses, my servant. Joshua, I know that you saw that Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Moses, my servant. I know you may have understood because he opened up to you when I said to him that he should speak to the rock. He struck the rock. But Moses, my servant. I know you are aware he died in the wilderness. He didn't lead the people in. But he's my servant. You, must, you see, the way God sees things, when you see the way God sees, you apply caution in what you do. There are some that say, I don't need anybody. I don't know the reference point. Hebrews 6 verse 12. Follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Hebrews 13, 7. Concerning them, he said, whose faith follow. Remember them who have rule over you. Whose faith follow. Whose faith, their faith, their work with God, follow. 1 Corinthians 4, 16. Follow me. Philippians 3, verse 17. Paul was speaking. He said, be followers of me. Paul said that. You think you don't want me to follow men? Paul said, in fact, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he said, be followers of me as I follow Christ. Paul called people my children. The Gospel of John, John said, my children. 1 John 2, 1, my children. 1 John uh, 3, 18, my little children. Galatians 4, 19, I believe. Galatians 4, 19, or, yeah. Galatians, my little children, whom I travel in birth until Christ be formed in you. So, we need to look at these men of God. You see, when Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. When we follow men, and we see them go in the way that is not scriptural, we avoid it. We follow the God in them. We don't follow the negative things in them. Because you can never see a perfect mentor but you only can see a perfect mantle. Elijah submitted not to a perfect mentor, but a perfect mantle. 